If you're thinking about building a house or a cabin out of SIPs, structurally insulated panels like we are, um, I don't blame you if you're super confused about these things. Nothing about them seems to make sense when you're first looking at them. It kind of looks like uh, chunks of ice chests that are glued together with some OSB on the outside. But they're actually stronger than regular 2x4 or 2x6 framing. So let's dive into this. I'll show you everything that I've figured out about them. We'll put together this little wall section and we'll run some electrical in it. So let's get into this. The, the structural side of these things. Um, not having any two by fours in here really gets, really got me confused because I couldn't understand what was holding it all up. You look at the foam core and you're like, well, the foam can't hold up the whole building, right? So you, you really got to look into the structure on how it goes together. Um, so down here at the bottom, you've got your bottom plate, which is inset half an inch so that your SIPS panel can sit down on it and then your OSB on the outside is actually bearing on whatever structure is below it right so here I've got my mud sill in the detail for our house you've actually got uh, the sheeting and everything is going to be over the top of the mud sill and then you'll install your bottom plate um, but you really need to start thinking about this OSB on the outsides and the insides is actually your bearing material. So all the weight is being supported by this, I don't want to call it sheeting, but by this OSB. So this is a two by two mock-up that we've set up so that we can show you how to run the electrical and all that stuff. Um, but in a two foot wide section of standard two by construction, uh, if you were doing 16 inch on center, you're going to have, you know, half of a two by four over here that would be support and then one full one that's going to be in here is support, right? So um, basically we'll just call it two two by fours. So that's how much in a two foot section of wall is supporting. Now, since the load is being uh, transferred down in these sheets of OSB, I went ahead and I cut out two by four size pieces of OSB. You can see they're the same width as a two by four, just so that you could get a sense. And I just laid them all out here. So you got two foot wide worth of this OSB. And see, we're just gonna stack them up next to the two by fours. So you can see we've got the two two by fours that are in there and we've got all this OSB, which represents the full width of one of these sheets that comes out to the to the exact same basic thickness. Um, so your bearing surface is identical, but there's two sheets of OSB on this thing. So in actuality, your bearing surface is that much compared to the two by four. So it's actually double. Now, if you're saying I'm framing my exterior walls two by six, not two by four. So we're also doing two by six. Um, this is representative of two by six uh, SIPS panel. The exterior OSB sheeting is actually thicker on that. So it all masks out the same. Also, if you're wanting the thicker OSB for the two by four framing style with, so you're gonna have less insulation in between, these things are fully customizable and I'm sure that they're going to have no problem, you know, using the thicker uh, OSB. I've also seen options where you can run uh, regular plywood instead of OSB. Um, sometimes they do that. Interior is regular plywood. Exterior is uh, OSB. I've even seen one company that's actually using the zip system sheeting as their exterior panel and OSB on the interior. When you're building with SIPs, what's basically going to happen is you're going to end up with a truckload full of panels that range in you know, various sizes. Um, they can get pretty big, which is actually what speeds up the construction. 
and they're generally built uh, in a factory uh, with CNC machines that are cutting them out precisely. So you're going to get a very straight, very precise, uh, you know, building envelope that you get to assemble on site uh, with your window openings cut out and uh, uh, door openings, all that stuff. You may have to put some uh, some two by material in there. Uh, you know, if this was a, a door opening or something, you would probably be putting a two by four in here and screwing into that, you know, to, uh, to get that rough opening so that you can install the doors later. Um, that's kind of how they go together. Um, this is a mock-up of just a wall segment. I uh, just kind of wanted to show you guys how this works. So what we've got is we've got a spline um, and you can see it's got the electrical chases in here. I actually had to put these in, but when you order them, they're going to come with uh, electrical chases at predetermined intervals. And you can always ask for, you know, a custom option if, if you need to run, you know, an electrical chase 96 inches up on the wall, they can put that in for you at the factory. No big deal. But they pretty much come standard um, Premier, which is who we are planning to use currently. Um, it runs them, I think, at 16 and 42 inches, something like that, which is basically your standard outlet height uh, and your standard switch height. Um, and then there's a, a vertical uh, that's every four feet. Um, so pre-planning those openings here in the bottom to go up into your SIPS panel because it is going to be a nightmare to uh, to to run stuff in these walls after it's you know once they're on site you're going to really want as many of these you know chases and stuff cut out as possible. So the first piece that you're going to put in when you're building is going to be this bottom plate and it's going to be inset a half inch back so like we talked about so that all of your bearing uh, area here on this exterior sheet is being transferred down into you know, the mud sill. Um, in between panels, you've got splines. Uh, so that goes in right there. And the electrical chase goes through both and they're marked on the exterior. So I marked them with a marker when they come from the factory. They've got some black lines or blue lines uh, that are painted on the exterior so that you know where they're at, which makes it easier uh, you know, once you've got the structure put together and you're dried in, you go through to install electrical, you know, hey, there's a line here that means I can, you know, cut into that and get right into that electrical chase. So we've got our spline put in place and then we put our second panel into place. And then you come through and This is where it gets really familiar and you start feeling like, you know, just standard construction. Um, nailing six inch on center, I think is the, the spec six to eight inches, both into your bottom plate and on your splines. Um, front and back, so don't forget that. You've got to secure it both sides. So you can see, I just put a couple screws in there. This guy's anchored nice and solid. So another thing to consider with with SIPs um, and running electrical or plumbing or anything, you can't come through and just remove a strip out of the SIPs like that. Like we talked about, this is a load bearing uh, surface. So all of this is load bearing. If you come through and you cut this thing, uh, you're removing the load bearing area and you run the risk of this thing buckling down on top of that because all of your load is being transferred in this outside skin. Now, I'm going to try a couple other things as we go along here. Um, and if you watched our ICF video on installing the electrical in it, um, it's definitely much easier to do the electrical in ICFs uh, than these SIPS panels. So I'm getting ready. I'm going to cut out. You can see I've got my outlet marked here. I'm actually going to drill all four corners and then use my jigsaw and just cut this thing out. Uh, then we'll pop that piece out. Now, we're going to run electrical up like we're coming out of the uh, space in between the, the two floors. We're going to run it up into the panel and we're going to turn right here and we're going to come over and into this outlet. So 
The trick is, is that we've got to make this turn right here. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to drill this intersection with a hole saw so that we can fish the, the Romex up, pull it out, and then make that run over here. So definitely a little bit more complicated than the ICFs. Just keep in mind, this is exterior walls. Um, and unlike the, unlike the ICFs, I'm not going to run any plumbing in these walls. I know it can be done and you can talk with your, your SIPS manufacturer, but, uh, it just seems like too big of a pain in the butt for me to even want to tackle. Plus I'm trying to keep all the plumbing off of the exterior walls anyways. So not that big of a deal for me. But if it's something that you need, I would talk with your manufacturer and just let them know, hey, we've got a sink going in in this location. We'd like to bring water through. Now, half inch pecs, probably not a big deal, um, but any kind of a drain line or anything in here would uh, be a complete nightmare. All right, so we've got that thing cut. Now let's see if we can just pop this guy out. There we go. Now, we probably just use the the foam cutter if we need to, but you can see we came right back in here into this, into this little section. So one, this is a disadvantage of working with these, uh, all this foam stuff is you got all this foam that you have to deal with. So we're gonna use the same style boxes that we used on the, uh, on the ICFs, and it's just gonna go right in there get screwed in and we'll be nice and tight. But we're not ready for that, but we'll see how that works out. All right, so you can see there, we're into both of these, these chases. We've got the vertical chase and we right here, and we got the horizontal. So that's how you get the intersection opened now we're going to save all these pieces and we're going to try and cut all of them in the house with the same hole saw. That way we can come back through and any of them that we can put back in and just foam back in there. We'll just do that. Okay, so I pre-drilled my hole coming up through my bottom plate, uh, going up into this, uh, into this vertical chase. So all that matched up. That's something you got to do before you put these things on because if you're going around just punching holes from underneath, um, it's going to be a pain in the butt. Now I got my Romex and what we're going to do is we're going to just run it up in like that and pull it out and then and get into that chase. out so I can go straight. So once you got the wire through, same as the ICF, slide the uh, Romex into the box. Get it seated down in there, flush. One screw, you're all good to go. So now installing the drywall on the SIPs, um, extremely easy. So literally anywhere you wanna go, Pick a spot, throw a screw, doesn't matter, no worrying about studs, where they're at, you can just throw screws anywhere you want. One thing I forgot to get mention as I was going through and assembling the wall, there is a sealant that you're putting on um, to the splines and on your bottom plate. Uh, so that it, it acts like a gasket as you start 
putting these panels together, there's a sealant inside here that gets sandwiched, sandwiched in there and acts as a sealant and it's fairly flexible. So uh, you get really, really good um, air sealing with SIPs, same way with the ICFs. So my overall opinion of SIPs, um, once you can get kind of an understanding of how they work, um, they're not as scary. They definitely feel more familiar, more like standard framing uh, than say like ICFs do. Um, it goes together really quick. Um, they're super energy efficient. Um, the electrical is a little bit, definitely not as easy as ICF. Uh, maybe a little bit more difficult than standard framing, but honestly, by the time you go through and you drill holes in every stud, trying to make some of those long runs through walls, um, I don't know, it may not be that bad. Granted, this was a small, uh, small piece to really work with. And these are only going to be the exterior walls of our house. Um, and that's really what SIPs are for is for the exterior walls. Um, so it's probably not going to be that bad. I think for the speed of construction, um, the energy efficiency and the strength, uh, for us with what we're doing, I think it makes, um, really good sense that we're doing ICFs on the bottom, SIPs on the top. Um, it's definitely a DIY uh, type of build. I think anybody with some, you know, rough, you know, framing or carpentry experience uh, will get the get the hang of this fairly fairly quick. There's not too many special tools that you're going to have to get. Um, you're cutting through OSB, and then there's some foam. Uh, maybe that, maybe a, a foam knife. Um, you might want a beam saw or something that you can cut through uh, something a little bit thicker uh, just because some of these panels are, you know, fairly thick. Like this is uh, the equivalent of two by six construction. Uh, this is what we're doing our house with and it's uh, six and seven eighths thick total. So. You've got, uh, what do you got here? 5H um, OSB and uh, five and a half inches of foam. Pretty straightforward, it's not that bad. Um, and I think a couple, you know, get a group of friends, you guys can probably blow through, through this fairly quick. And, and I think it's just like anything, you get it square and you start going up. That's the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope he gave you uh, some sort of a comfort level with building with SIPs. If you have any specific questions, feel free to ask, leave a comment. Um, once we get into building the house a little bit later on this year, you'll get to see the second story go up all out of SIPs and we'll get real in depth with exactly what we're doing up there. So we'll see you in the next video.